and welcome back to the Monoprice Studio. My name is Dimitri, and today we're going to be going over our new MP Jewel 3D printer. This printer is a full DIY kit that does require assembly, and in this series we're going to go over the entire process of building your new printer in detail. In the video description, you can also find the timestamp playlist so you can skip around if needed. Let's get started and lay out all of our components that come supplied with the printer. If anything is missing, please contact our Monoprice customer support team for a replacement. Starting with the assembly, let's grab our pre-assembled base of the printer and the Z-axis profiles both left and right sides with four of the included M5 by 45 screws. Using the four screws, insert them from the underside of the printer's base to secure the left and right Z-axis profile. Note that the left side contains the Z-axis limit switch. Next, let's grab our Z-axis motor kit and T-shaped screw rod. Secure the T-shaped screw rod onto the Z-axis motor kit, then loosely attach the Z-axis motor assembly to the X-axis profile, using the two supplied M4x20 screws. Here, we'll take the supplied open end wrench and secure the pneumatic joint, that's the push lock fitting, to the XE axis kit. This section can be a little involved, but easy to do. Let's grab our X-axis kit, extruder kit, synchronous belt, Z-axis passive block, and three M5 by 14 hexagon socket round head screws. Take the belt and set it inside of the X-axis guide rail and allow the end to hang over just a little bit on one side. Now take the extruder kit and insert the X-axis rails with the belt through the V-wheels of the extruder assembly. Now pull the belt through and allow it to rest. Secure the Z-axis passive block to the X-axis kit using the M5 by 14 screw. Next, we'll use the M5 by 14 screws to secure the entire assembly to the XE axis kit. Here, we're going to take our X-axis tensioner assembly now and disassemble it to allow the belt to insert into the wheel of the tensioner. Once inserted, reassemble the tensioner, but do not tighten it fully. Now use two of the M4 by 14 screws to secure the pulley to the X-axis tensioner Insert the ends of the synchronous belt through the sheet metal slots on the rear of the extruder kit like shown. Let's install the limit switch on the back of the extruder assembly using two M4 by eight socket head spring combination screws. Then fully tighten the tensioner screws so that the belt is snug. Let's do a quick check and move the extruder from left and right and make sure that there is tension on the extruder as we contact the x-axis limit switch. The belt should have elasticity. Too tight of a belt can rip, but too loose can affect print quality. Now that our main components are assembled, let's take our z-axis moving assembly and insert the v-wheels into the grooves on the z-axis profile on the base of the printer. You would need to thread the z-axis threaded rod into the x-axis moving assembly. Now we can go ahead and install the gantry on the top of the Z-axis profile using four of the M4 by 25 hexagonal socket head combination screws. Now 
Next, let's take out our screen bracket and insert four of the M4 by 12 screws into the right side of the bracket and four M4 T-nuts on the left-hand side and thread each of them together, but do not tighten them down. Take the screen bracket now and insert the four installed T-nuts into the side of the printer's base into the grooves and tighten down the screws to secure in place. We can now take the screen for the printer and attach the ribbon cable to the screen. Here, you can now attach the screen to the printer by press fitting to the bracket. Unscrew the nut from the spool holder and insert it into the filament rack and retighten the nut from the spool holder. Insert two M4 by six screws through the filament rack and thread two M4 T-nuts onto the screws, but do not tighten them down. Slide the complete spool holder into the grooves of the gantry and tighten down the screws to secure it in place. Reinstall the gantry end caps as well. Referring to the yellow labels on each connector, plug the 6-pin connector into the X, Y, and Z stepper motors and the 3-pin connector into each limit switch. You'll also be installing the PTFE tube into the Odin connector on top of the extruder assembly. Now, check the voltage switch on the back of your printer to make sure it matches your region's voltage requirements if necessary. Now go ahead and plug in the AC power cord and power on the unit. We can now check the build plate and begin the bed leveling process. If you do notice any wobble, you can go ahead and take the open end wrench to tighten down the B-wheels on the build plate until the bed is steady. Let's power on the unit and navigate to the control screen on the home page. Next, press the auto home option to home all of the axes. Once done, disable the stepper motors so that they do not move any further. Now, move the extruder by hand until it is directly over the front left leveling screw. Using a piece of paper, you'll slide it in between the nozzle of the printer and the build plate. Adjust the leveling nut until the paper has slight resistance when moved. If the nozzle is not close enough to the build plate, you can adjust the Z-axis limit switch to bring the Z-axis closer to the build plate. Repeat this step for each of the leveling screws and the center of the build plate. Before filament can be loaded into your printer, you have to go to your control menu, then press preheat PLA or whatever temperature is required for the filament you choose to use. This will automatically heat up the nozzle and the build plate to the temperatures in the settings menu. Now at this point, you're ready to prepare your print. We will cover this in detail in our next video for this unit. In the meantime, have a great rest of your day.